Okay, as far as section 7 goes of chapter 5, we did not cover the sum or difference of perfect cubes in Math 100. So this is a new lesson for those of you who had Math 100. So we'll start off with uh, these topics and then going through the key terms. Since there are only three, it should be pretty easy. The difference of perfect cubes. Well, it looks like B here. The difference of squares. Looks like A. And the sum of cubes is C. And what I'll do next is go through the recipe for factoring the sum and differences of perfect cubes. So we'll raise it up a little bit. And now for the recipe. And the recipe is very similar for the sum of perfect cubes or the difference of perfect cubes. Basically, it starts with making a parenthesis for two terms and a parenthesis for three terms. Then you look at this sign right here, and this sign goes there. Now, if you have a plus here, the middle sign of your three-term trinomial over here will be its opposite sign. So that's a negative. The first and last of this trinomial are always plus. In fact, we can do the negative one here as well because it's so similar. Now, if this were an a cubed minus b cubed, the only difference is the sign here would be a negative, and the sign here would be a positive. Otherwise, everything else is the same. So, what's the recipe? Well, you look at this first term here, and you say, what is the cube root of that? And that's a. The cube root of that, and that's b. And that's the same down here. Now, the next thing is you square this term, and that goes there. Now, you multiply these two terms together, and that goes there. Now, notice, normally you would think you'd get a plus there, but because if this is a plus, the middle sign is its opposite, and that takes precedent over this. And then you square the last term. And that's the recipe. So notice for uh, the difference of perfect squares, the sum of perfect squares, the only difference is that for the sum, the plus goes here, the negative goes there. For the difference, the negative goes there, opposite sign there. The rule is you set up a parenthesis with two. So let's do this one. And I set this up ahead of time here. Uh, parenthesis for two, parenthesis for three. So let's work on the signs first. So, plus there, so we have a plus there, a minus there, a minus there, a plus there, plus there, a minus there, plus there, a minus there. Now let's take the cube roots. This is going to be x, this will be 5. This will be 4t. This will be a 1. 
This will be a 2. This will be a 3y. This will be a z. And this will be a w. Now the rule is square this. Square that. Square that. Square that. And now multiply these two together, disregarding the sign. Oh, but let's put the 5 first here. So again, multiplying these together give you this. We're disregarding the sign because if this is plus, the middle sign here is opposite. So multiply these together, multiply these together, multiply these together. Remember the sign is already fixed. Now we square the last term, and these are always going to be positive. And there we have it. So the rule is Find out that it's the difference of or sum of perfect cues. Parenthesis for two, parenthesis for three. Whatever sign is there, we put there. Opposite sign in the middle of your three term trinomial. Cube root, cube root, square this, multiply these together, square that. And it's exactly the same for the difference of perfect cubes. Now, I didn't do number 8 for a reason, because look at it. And remember, the first thing always, factor out the greatest common factor. And let's get the right sign there. So we have to put the 6 out there. And then it's 1 minus p. Remember here it's going to be a plus. Square the first term. Multiply these together. Square the last term. This is going to be a negative. This will be a plus. Cube root of that is d. Cube root of that is 0. 2, and then this is going to be d squared. This is going to be a 0 0.2 d, and this is going to be 0 0.04. Okay, we'll continue. Now, some of these next few take a little modification. As we look at 10, we have to factor out a 3. Nothing out of there. Here we're going to factor out a p. Here we're going to factor out a 10. Here we're going to factor out 3m squared. And it gives us this. So let's do the signs. Plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Don't forget here we need the 3, here we need the p, here we need the 10, here we need the 3m squared. Okay, so this is going to be a and 2b. This is going to be x and 1 third. Q, p, 5, t squared, s squared. And this is going to be m, and this is going to be 10. 
Okay, I finished these up. Uh, again, we take the square root of each of the first terms. Square root, I'm sorry, cube root. Cube root of each of the first, cube root of each of the second. Then we square the first, multiply these together for the second, disregarding the sign, and then square the last term. And there we go. Now, I didn't check it particularly for any errors. Remember, if you spot an error, that's a possible math zone pen or a bonus point. And uh, keep in mind, note the time and the video you are watching. And I'm pleased to give those out. I could eliminate them all, but then what would be the challenge? So we'll do some of this live here. We want to set up a parenthesis for two terms, parenthesis for three, parenthesis for two, parenthesis for three, parenthesis for two, parenthesis for three. And then we have some equations. We'll get to those in a few moments. Okay, so uh, signs, this is negative. Whatever is there goes there, and then opposite sign here. So negative, opposite sign. Positive, opposite sign. Q, uh, cube root, x squared, 1. y squared, and this will be 4 c squared. And now the cube root of that, it's sort of like dividing that by 5, gives me, oh, let's, before we do that, I think we could factor out x to the 6th here, which I was forgetting. So x to the 6th leaves me x to the ninth plus y to the twelfth. That's better. So now I put x to the sixth out here, and the cube root of that, again dividing it by three, gives me a three there. This gives me y to the fourth. Okay. So checking out our work, we're going to square this, multiply these together, disregarding the sign, square that. Okay, that checks out. This checks out. Squaring that gives me a positive 16 z to the fourth. Perfect. And that looks good. Okay, in doing this last one, what we're going to do is use a technique maybe that you haven't had yet, but not sure. Uh, we're going to set this up as t to the third, transpose this to the other side, and we get a negative. Now, to find out what t is, we take the third root of t, and we take the third root of that. Now, when we do that, we get t equals a negative 10. Because if you multiply negative 10 by itself three times, you get a negative 1,000. Now for number 19, you have to divide both sides by 6 after, well, we transposed it already. And then we're going to divide, well, we got the third, x to the third equals 8. Again, take the third root of this, and then the third root of 8 gives you x equals 2. Now, this is sort of a shortcut way of doing it, but it is satisfactory at this stage. Okay, well, there's another lesson. Good luck with your homework, practice, and quiz bees.